As always, this episode of the 1878 FM podcast is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. Make Green King your go-to destination for the season's final stretch. Why? For one, you can watch every televised Toffees game down with delicious food and refreshing beverages. And with 900 sports clubs dotted around the UK, chances are you're within walking distance of your local Green King. Let's be honest, watching football is way better with friends and family. So get the squad together for every televised Premier League fixture in an atmosphere worth sharing. That includes huge title showdowns, race for European qualification and the nail-biting relegation system. Pointers. Don't forget to download the Green King Sports app to enjoy your exclusive competitions and discounts whenever there is a game on. Right, on with the podcast. Hello, welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. It's a full house. David Vitti is back in, I was going to say the house. There he is. And we've got the sounds to go with it. Dave, how the hell are you? I'm very good, thank you. Do I need to apologise for my no. my absence in the last two weeks? Because no. that's not been me in some kind of sulk or, or staying away or, or feel threatened by Sam's brilliance. It's just <laughs> the fact that I've been busy and stuff hasn't really worked out. However, it's not about me because now that I've come back, I've noticed that things have changed in my absence. There's There's been new decoration we have some nice wooden paneling behind you Mm, yes what's going on where are you explain to me please well we're still in the studio but we've just jazzed it up a little bit we thought what can keep dave interested Mm. Uh, and what (laughs) we did is we've tried to just very much like you know you might have been in a relationship for a while and and your significant other gets some lingerie or lingerie sure. or you know yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. tight yeah, fitting yeah. bills whatever yeah. it is to keep yeah. that fire burning power aid and, yeah. keep it and alive aid. power aid keep it alive power aid and and, and bars, energy bars energy bars energy bars so yeah. you know what we did we thought can we try and get Dave interested mm. in us again mm. to see whether the the flame is you know totally being extinguished yeah. or can we get it flickering again mm. and what hey, i will say it's, it's i think it's flickering <laughs> i was gonna say i think it's flickering i think mm. we've piqued your interest the curtains are yeah. drawn <laughs> very peaky if anyone rings that bell they've got no chance right. <laughs> unless it's the scaffolders <laughs> for the roof who knows who knows we are of course joined by sam sam how are you i'm great thanks and i'm glad dave's back because i've only done one show with him and i thought i thought you know Bit of, bit of a spark there. I and agree. I thought, yeah. to use the relationship metaphor, yeah. he's ghosted us. He's, ghost, <laughs> he's, he's yeah. gone, nah, I don't want to wait with him. It, it, was, it, was, it was It was. a bit like one of those first dates, yeah. you know, mm. where suddenly it goes really, really well, yeah. and then suddenly you don't hear from them for yeah. two weeks. Mm. But I can assure you that I still feel very positive about our relationship, Sam, albeit in its infancy, but I think it's got potential. I'm, I'm enjoying where we are just at the moment, you know, and, uh, and as I say, there's still a bit of a flicker for me. Mm. But let's take things slowly because we don't want to sure. rush into anything. Yeah. You know, it, it, Sam, it must be intimidating though working with a man whose name literally is comedy. Yeah. Well, you know, you see, I, 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 I personally think that it's the one of the biggest misnomers in 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 <laughs> podcasting because it's never meant anything, you know. And you've got Sam, who's an actual comedian, who's actually funny, mm. and then you've got me, who's a sort of gobshite that's still getting away with it. Twenty years on, I mean, you say still. I mean, yeah. I, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. Really. Has Sam got a book though that says comedy, Sam? Yeah, I don't mm. think so. No. I don't think we're no, still waiting for I our copy. Gonna, I'm going to get one of those little sort of Hope things for me for me desk when I'm doing the podcast. It just says comedy Sam on the yeah. front. You know, I would. Why not? not? Have the Why not? Qualifications on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some people aren't unsure, so they yeah. know exactly what's going yeah. on. Yeah, Sam, I've noticed so, the last couple of weeks there's there's been a few of your social posts that have been a touch ironic and quite clearly piss taking, and yet a lot of people seem to have totally missed it. Very much yeah. like a, a, an Everton centre forward when crosses are whipped in. Yeah, they've mm. just totally and utterly missed the ball. Now, <laughs> I mean, you know, a little bit of satire, a little bit of tongue and cheekness. Where's where have those days gone? I don't know. I think there's just it's really worrying how many absolute morons exist <laughs> on the planet and are allowed to drive cars and have kids and 
I'm not suggesting for some kind of like license that you need, but mm. it's it's kind of uh, it's it's worrying, isn't it, when people don't get what's clearly a joke, or or especially when there was I, I'd written this thing about um, a little girl yeah. drawing the Union Jack and using a slightly wrong shade of red. Yeah. So I grabbed a crayon or something and scribbled over it, and you know the whole thing's obviously not true. And the amount of people who, you know, when you think they've got a gotcha on social yeah. media, they go, yeah. well, that, that clearly never happened. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's called fiction. Mm. Do, do you stand up at the end of Lord of the Rings and go, well, this documentary is not real? No. Like, whoa, 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 hang on, uh, hang on. Spoiler alert. <laughs> what are you saying? They say Lord of the Rings wasn't real. I'm- I'm saving up to go to New Zealand to see that shit. And I'm getting told it's not real. It's not real. It's made out of L Street Studio. Now you'll be telling me fucking Darth Vader's are fucking not real as not well. Swearing, but you but correct. <laughs> <laughs> it is mad. It is mad, Sam, isn't it? It is mad. Yeah, because they always say, don't they, that you should never explain a joke because it's mm. not funny when you explain it. Mm. However, as someone who's done stand up for a long time, the mechanics of a joke and why it's funny interest me. So I quite like explaining it, and I can I can get quite a lot of enjoyment from that. But I realise that is like like the kind of well, I think you'll find that the reason it's funny is because mm. the uh, structure dictates that your uh, memory goes mm. one way, and then uh, the review, you know it's, it that's not really what we're here for. So, no. but I like that. But then it's it just I suppose the thing is you can never ever underestimate the ability of the public to be. Uh, below the level of intelligence that you would hope. Coming here, you'd you'd witness it every day. <laughs> we yeah, but it's rest. true, though. I mean, these these people you wouldn't trust with scissors. You know, never mind safety scissors. You know, again the in the studio. Sophistications of satirical mm. comedy. Yeah, and know? and you should so, know, Dave, because you're like literally. If you, you've got a dog, I've got in scissors. It. No, but you've also got a. Do- <laughs> your, your your comedy name is literally, you know, like almost like having doctor before your name. You know what I mean? You earned that. You went to school mm. and earned that yeah. that doctorate that right. of comedy. Mm. They, you know, and got a book yeah. out of it. I mean, Everton's former CEO got a doctorate for basically just turning up. So you know, Dave's at least earned his. Yeah, I suppose. Go, you know? mm. <laughs> there you go. Um, I've just mentioned Everton there, and we are recording Jesus. this. I know, yeah, but we're recording this the day after we didn't lose. Well, that's good. If we'd have done this Monday, yeah. we'd have still been smarting from a terrible defeat, mm. which it was at the weekend. Uh, but last night, Dave, we went up to Newcastle. Obviously, a tough place to go. The caveat with this is they've got about 411 players out injured, but yeah, still a tough place to go. They just had a great win at the weekend. Um. And whilst I don't think it was a great performance in any way, shape, or form, and I think Everton got out of jail a little bit, we I did think a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did kind of hang on in there, and we did we took what could be a massive point really in in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I totally agree. And um, you know, I think obviously when they got the penalty and they equalised, and I thought if they can hang on to this now, this will be a tremendous result. Mm. Uh, a very flatting result, I would mm. say, over the 90 minutes, but a really, really important one. Um, and obviously, Everton being Everton, you know, I fully expected them to throw it away at the end, <laughs> but I was delighted that they didn't. Um, and especially with Forrest, you know, pulling off a massive win last night, mm. it's really important. Um, I mean, you know, you look at the early stages, we had two opportunities that I think we should have scored early doors. You know, Decore should have put the ball on the right-hand side rather than going to his near post, in my opinion. Mm. Um, and obviously there was the, the header from Tarkovsky as well, which Sitter. anywhere, anywhere mm. down from where he put it was in. Yeah, it was a goal, um, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, you look at those chances and we've seen it so many times and, you know, you, you use the word. There's a word that I never use in any other life, but it's, it's rue, as in rue the chances. And, mm. and Evan often rue the chances, if that's the right uh, application of that word. And I thought we were going to regret it again. Mm. Uh, and in many ways we did. Uh, I thought I thought Newcastle on balance were far and away the better side, but yeah. a huge result um, and a really important point, in my opinion. I mean, Sam... Dave's right, isn't he? James Sarkovsky heading over inside the six-yard box, unmarked. Mm. It, it, those are moments where you you know you get in front. It's a different game, isn't it? And but we did we did hang on in there. But you know, following Saturday, 
result. I mean, we scored 87th minute on Saturday. I think last night was the was the 88th, was it? Or the 86th, whatever it was. Saturday, we went on and lost it. So last night, there was a bit of previous hanging over from the first game. Can we hang on? And, you know, the nine minutes come up and you're always fearing the worst. But, mm. but we did, and, and it is a big... It's a big draw, even though it's only a point, and even though the performance wasn't great. These points now at this stage of the season, every one of them makes a difference, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, especially with Forrest winning. Yeah. And, and you know, Luton picking up points. I don't think they'll beat Arsenal tonight, so mm. hopefully not. But that Tarkovsky miss was as bad as any of Dom's yeah. misses. And I know, I know he's a defender and he's not there to put the ball in the back of the net necessarily, but it was just... it was it, It's... Guilt edge, that's another yeah. phrase that we only use. Oh, we've had <laughs> guilt and guilt edge. Guilt edge. What? what is to, a guilt? I, I went to see it differently to the... It's G I L T, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to yeah. Google it now while you carry on. I went Go to on. see the Fast Show on Monday um, in Liverpool and they did Clang. the segment. You know, they did the segment where, you know, uh, jumpers for goals and oh, all that. Yeah, yeah. And they kept on coming up with words that only get used. In football yeah. commentary, there was loads of them. It's just taking me back to that moment. We get a few, get a, be ready with a few more. But go ahead, Sam, guilt edge. Right. There's probably loads that we only use for Everton, and that's probably <laughs> one that's used more often. But mm. I think, like, I'm made up with that point as we all are. And I mm. think it's kind of, it's it's not a spring in me step, it's put a bounce in me step or mm. some, whatever's lower than a spring. I haven't figured yeah. that out. Like Is a, a bounce lower than a spring? Bounce is probably higher, actually. You I'd say bounce is higher. Into, yeah. A trip. Because I've never heard spring back ability of you, but I've a heard trip in, A trip in your step. A trip in your step. A, a skip in your step. Ooh, a, what about a skip? Zest. 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 New, zest. A new zest for life. <laughs> There is, I mean, I these, that, but... there is oh. these words. What have you got? Hang on. There is these words that <laughs> can only be used in a phrase, can't they? Like, if I walked in and said to Ned, make us a coffee, they, I, mean, yeah. I never would because I wouldn't trust them, but if it did, mm. make it with a bit of zest. Yeah. Would, I don't think he'd quite get it. You'd find something floating. <laughs> yeah, well, probably, yeah. yeah. Wasn't there yeah, something some, called some zest years zest. ago? Wasn't there something called zest? Years ago, like a lemon squeeze, wasn't that Zest? And summer, yeah, it wasn't. Was it like a washing up liquid or something? Or something, yeah. It's actually, that's Didn't what you I... advertise that, Dave? Quite possibly. Yeah, quite yeah. possibly. Back in the but, day. The Zest, the Zest, the Zest, the Zest, the Zest but, challenge. In, the Zest. in terms of what, in terms of what a gilt edged is. Oh yeah, go on. What are gilded edges, and are they right for your project? Edge gilding is the process of applying a metallic foil to the outer edges mm. of your book. Yeah, but you're, hang on, Dave, sorry to interrupt you. Aren't you going with guild edged? Where you should be looking for guilt edged. Oh, G-I-L-T, yeah, you're right. Dave. Well, here's one. Yeah, you right. can gild the lily, can't you? Gild well. yeah. one. Here's one. Gild the lily. Hang on. Taking a goal with a plum. Yeah, what you does do. that he mean? took his chance with a plum. What does yeah. that mean? A plum. And in what other walk of life? It's not a plum, is it? It's a plum. A plum. Yeah, and in what other walk of life would you say that? Sometimes with suitable a plum. Yeah. But that's even better. It's the different kinds of a plum. Yeah. Like, Excuse I imagine me, Ned's is... aplomb would be scruffy aplomb, wouldn't it? If Ned had any kind of aplomb, it would be like a scruffy aplomb. But taking yeah. it with suitable aplomb mm. means that you're expected to take it just... is I, Aplomb, is that comfortable, are we saying? Mm. Or easy or smart or... Apparently, if you do something with aplomb, you yeah. do it with confidence in a relaxed way. So that should never be used for Everton, ever? Never? No, ever. No. It's never relaxing. No, apart from releasing the accounts, <laughs> but um, well, they released that in a relaxed also, way while everything yeah, else is yeah, going on. Go on, Sam. Exactly. Sorry, guilt edge. Well, also, you, you take to Twitter, you don't take to Facebook. But anyway, regardless yeah, no, of that, never, the, never. The, the, the idea of coming on this podcast after the Bournemouth game, I was, I was, you know, I, I've just been like three weeks off. And we mm -hmm. talked last week didn't we, about uh, there's a guy around the corner and we, we keep seeing each other when there's been no Everton match. We're both in a great mood because we're both yeah. blues. And we're like, oh, there's no fussy. It's great. And they, you wonder what you're doing it for. And then we come back after three weeks and the dross that was saved up on oh. Saturday was so bad. Mm. That, and and I just I just lost all like reasoning as to why I was following this football team because there's just there was nothing there. And like, mm. you know, people, we, we've made a million analogies about Everton, but like if Everton were a person, Mm. They're not even a boring person. That you know, when you go to a party, there's like people you want to speak to, people you perhaps less prefer to speak to, or you know, people you'd have a little chit chat with, people yeah. you really gel with. There's, there might be a, someone who's a bit dull, but Everton aren't even that. Everton are like the person who's just got nothing about them. There's mm. nothing. They've maybe got one story, and we can't even tell that well. So you, you, you just, you, you know, those people where you, 
you talk to them and it makes you feel boring because it sort of sucks <laughs> the life force out of you. Energy That's vampires. Energy vampires, mm. they're called. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. We've all, I mean, we've all met people like that. And I'm sure, if we're being honest, we've all been those people to other people because not everyone's mm. going to gel with everyone else. It's not yeah. a personal thing. But everything, they're just, they're, they're like this vortex of passion and ideas and there's nothing going on. And, and then we go to Newcastle. First half's not great. Second half's better. Sneak a point at the end, and I think sneak's the right word. It was, mm. you know, perhaps lucky to get the point. Yeah. But you've got to be, you, when you look at like elite level sportsmen, you have this great ability of when a, when they miss a chance or they have a bad performance, they're able to put it to bed and move on because it mm. is in the past. And it, the, the past is the, the only thing that matters in sports is the moment you are in on that field or on course, that pitch yeah. or court. But Everton, as a club, there's been so much weight and baggage. It feels like it's weighing everyone down. Yeah. So you would hope that even if it is just a little equaliser at the end to get a point that, you know, in the scheme of things might be really important, we can just use that to, to follow on. You've talked quite a lot about um, Dom not being an angry centre forward. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. looked angry before he took the pen. He looked angry. Now, whether he was just terrified, I don't know. <laughs> but he looked angry. So I was thinking we need a campaign to make Dom angry. Yeah. Make him yeah. angry. Like, remember the old programmes that always have like, a player for a profile that I've like liked yeah. and disliked. The yeah, favorite yeah. film was always The Godfather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Favorite singer was always Luther Van Dross. They always oh, drove a Cortina. Yeah, yeah. Favorite meal pasta. Yeah, pasta. Do you no, want to no. be a bit more vague? <laughs> but <laughs> but <laughs> is the one on Dom? Is there some like likes and dislikes? If we got some kind of information, surely somewhere out there in the fan community can find out what gets him annoyed. Yeah, I mean, it could be something small. It could be something like. I don't know. Tom Davis cut his hair. Maybe. You know, do you know what yeah. I think? Do you know what I think might work? Poorly is, uh, fitting trousers. If mm. you know the, the 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 very tight bubble that he has in his hair. Mm, yeah. If he was to affix that, that's another word that you don't use very yeah. often. If he mm. was to affix that to an alternative part of his body mm. throughout oh. the ninety minutes, oh. maybe that might kind of make him, you know, yeah. like a bit mm. more, a bit more oh. on edge and mm. a bit more. Girl. Yeah. You know, it's just an idea. Very that, much that like Tony the Tiger. To allow him more guilt edged chances. <laughs> well, yeah, um, guilt edge. Apparently, guilt edge referring <laughs> to a stock exchange denoting government securities on which interest <laughs> payments will certainly be met and that will certainly be repaid at par on the due date. Mm. Okay. Like very so, guilt edged yeah. means essentially you're guaranteed to get it back. So mm-hmm. when you miss a guilt edge yeah. chance, what they're actually saying is that's a guarantee of a goal. Yeah. Unless yeah. you Should use it, another unless name. you use it for Everton, yeah. of course, mm-hmm. when it very much Absolutely. isn't. Yeah. It isn't guaranteed. Pet, I mean, Sam's just said, alluded to it there the the anger which Dominic Caldo struck the ball with, mm-hmm. but on a personal level, and I don't know whether you've seen the interview with him after the game and they reminded him he'd gone twenty odd games and he said you don't need to remind me. Yeah. You know, it was on my mind. How big a goal can that be for him, you know, in this run? And we've got eight games left now, and I said on my aftermatch stuff yeah. last night, that sometimes is the thing that might spear him to get yeah. three or four important goals I've seen now. And of the course, end of it, and confidence is a weird thing, because in all in all respects, he scored against Spurs, but it was disallowed. Yeah, of course. He scored, Twice. He scored against Spurs at home, mm. and it was given yeah. to Jack Harrison. And I'll never... Because it hit Jack it Harrison. It doesn't matter. It was his goal. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, right. Because if it did to defend it, it'd still be Dom on a Cameroon's goal, wouldn't it? So, oh, God. Um, so, you wonder how the psyche of a centre-forward works when they have scored goals, but they're not their name just is mm. being put printed. So he has got it now, and 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 it was an important. And goal. I was quite nervous for him mm. last night when he was taking. Did it. Did you think Tarkovsky was taking? I thought Tarkovsky was taking it. I thought, it. I thought, it. And I thought like, just yeah, just led it. Um, yeah. So the psyche that obviously plays a huge part mm. in 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 doing that, and just just having everyone stop talking about you, yeah, and just yeah. having mm. everyone just focus on. The rest of our amazing team. Um, <laughs> you can make a video about that, Sam. Mm. Um, you know, just take that focus away from yeah, it. And, you know, yeah. Beto scored a couple of goals in the last few games. Mm. He's now scored. And maybe the focus can be somewhere else yeah. rather than planted all at him. And, and everyone can just get on with their job. And I think it was just a huge moment. And mm. the last 30 minutes, I thought we played really well. And I think the, the changes did work. I think a lot of people have noticed pointing the finger at Onana going off, but I actually think it was the Corey going off. That, the that made the change. I thought he was. I thought he was 
quite poor. Well, last night. Nana's numbers, I think. No, I know, I know. But I, night, so. I don't really want to go over that because you know, but but I think the changes did work, and having not you know making effective changes three in one go, mm. where actually loads of things change at once rather than just going. We're making a like for like change and expecting. See, everything I, to change. I wouldn't have struck better off. I'd have left him with them. No, no, I'm just saying. Though, were, I mean, I'm not saying about the, the individuals. I'm just no, saying. No, it did make, I'm just yeah. saying that making three changes and making the opposition have to think about three different players rather than go, well, just do the same job, lads, mm. just with a different fella. I think that's a huge difference. So but, I, and apparently he was going to make four subs, but for some reason he made it, only made mm. three. So making those changes was huge. He never night. went full Marco Silva, though, did he? No. Drag no, three of no, them no. off after half an hour. No, we did uh, two now. But it, and it, yeah. it does make a difference. And, mm. and obviously we got a little got a touch, not luck, Shouldn't be luck. VAR disallowed the goal mm. rightfully. It wasn't luck. We mm. but but you seen that? No, well, I was just gonna say. I mean, Dave, there was there was two moments that went for us. It, mm. Well, well, probably three or four moments really. When we look back at it, Tarkovsky slice one against his own post. Um, we had the VAR offside goal, which would have mm. killed. Let's be honest, it was game over. Yeah, would have killed it off. That would have been yeah, game over. It was done. Got choked off, and then we also had Mikhalenko brilliantly clearing off the line. Yep. And then we got the penalty. I mean, why it? I mean, the referee, to be fair, he looked at it twice and give it, but it should have just been given anyway. But mm. we got it. And maybe, just maybe, they could look at that and go, because I'll be honest, I said to my dad when it was, when Mikhailenko kicked it off the line, still 1-0 then, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, huge. And they missed the I said, this actually might be one of them nights where we grab something mm -hmm. here because they've missed some good chances yeah, and yeah. and we got the VAR decision for the yeah. offside goal and sometimes you look at games don't get and you go yeah they, that's just gone against it. us just that's gone against us yeah. in the past so Dave I mean for once we had a couple of things go our way we weren't lucky because he was offside and it was a yeah. penalty Eddie yeah. Howe kind of said it as if they were unlucky like, we had two VAR decisions go against us. No, they were the, the correct decision, Eddie, on both counts. Mm, mm, um, mm. But for once, they kind of went in our favour and we were able to benefit from it. Yeah, I agree. And I think about time as well, because as you yeah. say, you know, we're sort of so used to these things not going our but way. But what did you make of the one on Saturday, Dave, at nil-nil on Dominic Calvert-Lewin? Because when I first saw it, I thought, you're not getting a pen for that, Dom. Get up. Mm. But by the fourth time I'd watched it, and then I was reminded that Garnacho had got one the other week for the same incidents and things like that. That's a penalty as well, then, isn't it, on Saturday? I didn't see it on Saturday, I'll be okay. honest with you, because I've been travelling the last okay. couple of days. Okay, well, it was, yeah. it was, yeah. there was a, a flick in the Himalayas. There was a flick on his <laughs> on his foot as he went to shoot. Others have been have got penalties for it. Yeah. Yeah. Last night, Shay Given, the show that again was like, it's an absolute stonewall penalty. That, how Everton yeah, yeah. haven't got that penalty is unbelievable. I heard him mention it. Yeah. yeah. So that was on Saturday, but last night we did get one, didn't we? And mm. and it worked in our favour. Yeah, and as I say, it's about time. I think you know. I mean, when you, in the old days before VAR and stuff mm. like that, that human error would even itself out over the course of a season. You mm. would imagine, you know. And there's a lot to be said for that. And yeah, I just felt that you know things did. You know, a couple of key things did go away last night, and and I think it was about time that they did. Mm. And uh, and yeah, you know, it resulted in in a m much needed point. Mm. Mm. I mean, Sam, just going from obviously those decisions and getting the result. Um, we've got a massive game at the weekend now, haven't we? And and I said last night after the thing, there's no, there's kind of like no points Everton digging in and grabbing a, a, a big point at Newcastle. And then not being able to follow it up without beating Burnley at home, we were second to bottom. And I know they're in, ironically, they're in their best unbeaten run of the season at the moment. Mm. I think it's three without defeat. Um, but they are the second worst team in the league. We have beat them twice this season already, but we absolutely have to follow this point up with three points now at home to Burnley, don't we? Oh, 100% because it's, it is pointless and it, it it's we're running out of games, aren't we? Mm. We've got home yeah. games that we should be winning, and that is yeah. one that we should be winning. I'm still not very confident because I still don't think we've we've shown enough over the last. Mm. Well, I mean the the losing run, or not sorry, the the run without a win. Mm. And Sean Dyke can spin it all all he wants and talk about X G till he's blue in the face. But mm. the, the only stat I can think of now is that the last time Everton went this long without winning, my mum was younger than my kids are. And that wow. is 
a terrifying prospect to think about how long ago that was. So sixty-seven years, ten, Sam. Sixty-seven terrible, years. Terrible, terrible run. Mm. Um, Burnley have looked. Burnley have looked all right, haven't they? The last few yeah. weeks, they've yeah. Yeah. Put four games without without losing, they've looked mm. all right. So I don't know. I mean, unless because the, the other thing that did go our way last night was those Newcastle fans dressing up as dinosaurs because yeah. it just <laughs> it inspires Pickford. So what? Why did he do? I don't understand the, the logic in that because mm. a grown man turns up at a football match dressed as a dinosaur. I've, I've mm. said this before: the the bounce that they've had since the new ownership mm. and all that, they should be. I, in my, I'm not listen. Do what you want, but I, if they come to Goodison in in December, the same we beat them three 0 He had a clean sheet. He was fine, but aren't they past that as a club now? Aren't they? I boo him if you want, mm. but booing him every time he had the ball, every kick, weighing a couple of his kicks that were actually unbelievable passes that put us yeah, through twice is mad. And it's like, aren't you above that now? Are they rentals? Are they doing anything with those jaws? All the time. All the times. Are they going out? Are, like, are they making the most of it? Are they going out? Are they going to like kids' parties? Are they looking and, and going, mm. got Everton a week Thursday? Yeah. Like, that's at the shop. Listen, have you got that dinosaur out that can yeah. rent yeah. for a day? Is there a dinosaur at us, like, shop? It oh, just specialises oh, just in inflatable. Diner shop. Diner, Diner shop. shop. Yeah. Diner shop in yeah. Holland, apparently. Um, Diner shop. Diner shop. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's very strange. <laughs> They're a very strange bunch, aren't they? You know, between dinosaurs and, and horses. Who knows mm. who's safe? I mean, who's to say the dinosaurs weren't made extinct by Geordies? I can't answer that. No, question. no one I can't. We weren't there, were we? We, no, we weren't there. there. We weren't no. there, so no. we can't answer that. Um, but you know, it's it's one to think on. It is one you know, to, to, Matt Lati- to ruminate. Matt Latissier would would have a field day with oh, that one. I feel, I feel, makes you think, makes you think, makes you think. Of course, yeah. Yeah. but uh, but again, it only inspires Jordan Pickford. Mm. Who, who one thing I wanted to mention about last night though is on the penalties is though, and this is something I mentioned on Monday is, wasn't it great to see someone? Run after a referee and get hold of him and go, hey, get up, what the... Well, that's because you said the person on Saturday wasn't on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what, what we he were was saying last after the game on Saturday, the one you, you missed, Dave, uh, when you were travelling. Um, was that Dom just sort of, when he was fouled, just looked at the referee and everyone else just looked at the referee and the game just went on. Whereas Ashley Young last night, who, like, I know loads of people don't like her. Mm. I actually, I actually, do, quite well, I actually do like Ashley Young because he's a little mm. hotter. Who do you like? Ashley Young. Yeah, I'm going to say, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, say, say, he doesn't play for us. No, We've no. got a player called no. Ashley Young. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because who ironically he... isn't. <laughs> no. So, but well, he's... our right wing on Saturday, Dave, which you might have missed, was 73 years old at one stage mm-hmm. with a Seamus and Ashley. But he's, he's a hotter and he, mm. he's, he's professional as who knows the game inside yeah. and out. And some of our players, some of getting angry, mm. are so passive. No, they are, Last yeah. night, he forced he forced the referee into that situation. Said this on Saturday, and you know, again, you have a few people going, what difference does it make? Well, it always it makes, makes a, a difference. Big difference yeah. You chase after the referee, you get in the referee's face, and you almost stop the game mm. and make him make that decision where you, at least afterwards, you can go, I did everything I could. And the referee, the one who's the one who looks stupid now. Mm. Like, why you even had to look at the screen to say that was a penalty is he mad. It, he? Oh, because but, they were both pulling each other according to Eddie Howe. He forced that situation mm. where they had to look at it. And that's what went wrong on Saturday. All our players just went, oh, well. well it's and like, it's, you've got, they've got to start if it. You I don't take. Take Dom's brawn off him or something. Mm. I don't I don't know. Do something. If you chase after a referee and you pick up a booking, yeah. at least at least it stops the game. Yeah. And it makes people go What's exactly in that. Yeah. Whereas exactly. like um, you know, we saw last night Tarkovsky getting booked for just kicking the lad who yeah, exactly. it was pathetic. Exactly. It was the way he won the ball back. Was, yeah, it was the worst booking I've ever seen from an Everton play because it was embarrassing. And, hang on, Dwight McNeil's was worse because at one minute he was one on one with the keeper. Oh, yeah. And then next All right, minute... that Martin Lee was better, yeah. <laughs> was worse but what I mean is you're giving a cheap mm. booking away for unnecessarily yeah. so you may as well chase a referee like you say yeah. and get in his face mm. so the game stops and you know what the VAR people might go and go why is yeah. he kicking off and have another they might not but at least yeah. you feel at least like you've done something and then afterwards, like afterwards, you can, afterwards you can speed it up and add Benny Hill music to you it could, and it would look great and it'd look great that's the, the, the win win <laughs> go ahead Sam it shocks me with, with Sean Dice because often like teams are built in the mould of the manager yeah. he's not someone who's who's shy about complaining no. and no, flagging no. things up and speaking to the officials is he so no. it's obviously the players just it, some players aren't wired that way and that's the no. personality and like but Actually don't you have to instill that, though? 
tramp before you. If you watch like Atletico Madrid, they cry arse about every Liverpool. I watched Liverpool the other day against Brighton. Any touch, they throw themselves for like roll like they've been shot. Yeah. Every player clops and they, they all do it, which is fine, no problem with it. You see, other teams, City are great at throwing themselves about. Teams do it because they know that there's those margins. But like Atletico Madrid in particular, because Simeone is a cry ass, isn't he? He would fume mm. if you put zest in his coffee, mm. right? And all of the players do the same. Mm. So shouldn't the manager to try be fair, to instill though, to be that? fair though, just before I let that, fair, there was pictures of Sean Dyche in a in the in a, in a service station after the game. Yeah. And he was buying a meal deal of just ham ready salted and a bottle of water. Was so, he? you know, that's, uh, you know. Okay. You yeah, but he, he does moan on the side. So, Sam, I mean, what do you think, Sam? Shouldn't he Shouldn't he be, be doing that before the but game? It, yeah, because it's like, we can all see it. It, mm. it works. It mm. works. Like, we've got, and I'm sure there's data on this as well, somewhere from some kind of sports data company where, mm. you know, the amount of pressure you put on the referee, referee, the referee, equals... the referee, the referee. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was somewhere between Birmingham and Sydney. <laughs> We're all Good eye, boys. Mm. Good eye. But I, I, th- I think it, you know, it's, not, and you don't have to be. Atletico Madrid levels because they mm-hmm. are like they, they, I mean, no, they're, they're, the, like, they're the kings of it. If they were a pub team, they just they'd be bringing like spanners with them and all sorts. <laughs> maybe horrible, but you can at least have what if we've got Ashley Young who's a horror. You mm-hmm. at least need three or four, maybe five of the team who are just gonna and you can politely ask. But you know, like if you're not hardly watching a game and a, a game on the telly in the mm-hmm. corner and you're kind of dipping in and out, and then there's a foul and you don't really see the foul, but you see five or six of the yeah. team who've just been fouled all surround the ref instantly you go oh that must have been a big yeah, one yeah. and it might not have been but mm-hmm. it flags it up in your mind yeah. so the, the officials are going to be the same and then they've got VAR they can go back and check mm-hmm. and exactly. that penalty wouldn't have been given if Ashley Young wouldn't have been on the pitch and hadn't have been fouled probably if that would have been done I mean, that, as that, the case was on Saturday it, it, but it wouldn't have been a foul against Ashley Young if Ashley Young wouldn't have been on the pitch Sam I completely agree I with you Mike Cosgrove there, there you know the yeah. have Everton stay <laughs> on the bottom three they'll be alright yeah they will mate with all of this though, yeah. is this not just a sort of demonstration of the overall apathy that exists within the squad for anything you mm. know because mm. in all, everything that we're describing here is sort of fueled by passion and a desire to win and, and it's just so lacking in every department yeah. so mm. you know whether it's you know, I, I think that's ultimately why you don't see what we're talking about. You know, I, people yeah, sort yeah. of passionately surrounding the ref and whatnot, because there tends to be amongst the squad at the minute and the club as a whole, the feeling of just having their heads down yeah. mm. and almost just getting through it. You know, they're yeah. not enjoying the process, no. obviously, with, with a lot of the, the pressures that they've got, but you just see them and you see them in the tunnel and they've got their heads down and they're just thinking, you know what, we've got to get through this bloody, mm. you know. 99 minutes or something like that, and then it'll all be over for another week. And that's what it feels like. Yeah, yeah. I bet I... not one of them got up and sang karaoke at the Christmas party. Absolutely. Just, no. Like, yeah, nothing. Just, the guy who brought the kit was just, oh, I'll sing another one then. Yeah. Like, like come on. Come on, lads. Put your name down. Do some meatloaf. <laughs> no, I or often... a song by Michael Jackson. That's mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I often talk about this, about, like, it is, like, I know that he, Dice loves talking about, like, the untangibles, the smell. And all that kind of thing, control and the controllables. Oh, is, isn't it? It is like we all we you know we there is a staff for everything, but there's no stat for passion. There's no staff for you know getting stuck into a game like like we saw mm-hmm. in the last half an hour last night. Just rolling up your sleeves and just going, we've got to do something a little bit different here. And if you have to chase down a referee to prove that it's a penalty, then you've got to do that. And it's what the top sides do. They cry ass for everything. Mm-hmm. They make sure the referee. Um, knows he's in a game and knows he's got to make the decisions. Mm. The fans love it and our fans love it as well. And it's something that's massively gone out of the game. And it is one of those things that you can't quantify. But we've known it for years. It's like, well, and this is often a thing where people talk about the atmosphere at Goodison and say, you know, it, it, it starts with the players. But it does often start with the players, not the players playing amazing football because none of us have been used to that for a very long time. But players, as has been said in the past, winning a tackle, getting stuck in, getting in the face of the referee, getting in the face of the opposition, showing that they are doing everything to win a game of football. 
you know, and, and it, we just don't see that enough yeah. and far too many times. And it's what, as I said, it's what struck me on Saturday, how passive we were when it was an absolute certain penalty. Mm-hmm. And any, any club with anything would have been straight over in that referee's face and make him make a decision. And you know if that two minutes while he's dishing out yellow cards means the VAR have got nothing else to do but go back and watch that decision then you do that. It's why players roll around on the floor when they've been fouled to almost give the referee the second to give the VAR a second to go, oh, better have a little look at this. He's 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 writhing around. That's a good word, writhing. When does anyone writhing. ever use the word writhing? Oh, that can mm. be used in other... That, that, you know, <laughs> yeah, in kind of can. specialist stuff, they yeah. talk about writhing. Yeah. 50, they, shades. They 50, 50 shades. 50 shades. 50 shades. Yeah. Um, when they're, they're, they're is, writhing yeah. around writhing. in pain, yeah. you know, it gives the VAR an opportunity to go, hang on, lads, uh, put that butty down and let's, let's have, have a little a look. look. We've got something to do with our kits on in, yeah. in an office block, well, which is weird. Maybe we need some figures on XA, which is sort of expected apathy amongst mm. the squad, <laughs> you know, in, in mm. that particular It'd have to be X. AP though, okay. Dave, because there is well, an XA. Yeah. There is an XA. Okay. But okay. what about expected writhing? XW. Mm. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Mm. Maybe. Expected chasing of a ref. It doesn't really work, doesn't does, work. It, does it? <laughs> that sounds more like a garage band. <laughs> yeah. But that fair. never be trying to rename his band to be. But listen, <laughs> we we've we've the point was important because obviously Everton are still awaiting to hear the second PSR charge, aren't they? And we're hearing nothing to hear in between one and three or whatever. So just stop. Just stop. Just we just stop. don't know where just we stop. are at the just minute. Stop. So, nope. stop taking me joy away from me. No, but it's, that's why it's important. And it, we have to follow it up with a win on Saturday. Yeah. And obviously, soon we might we might know where we are with the, the, the charge. We might know where we are with our owners. Mm. And we might actually get back to just concentrating on the football. But for me, Everton need the four wins out of eight games. This is a big ask, but we've got four very... Winnable home games. There's five home games and three away games left. Joy. So yeah, but Chelsea away is not a, to me. I don't. There's no fear whatsoever attached to that no. game. None at all. And then Luton going grind. Luton. I'm sorry. Luton are like hard working, but the, you know Arsenal away again. Looking at it is a defeat because that's what we normally do there. But we could easily get two more points out of Chelsea and Luton. I mm-hmm. think easily yeah. at least. Um, so it's going to come to those home games. And Dave, three home wins all season. That's why Saturday is massive. It is huge, but then, you know, so is the Forest game and so is the Brentford game. Yeah, yeah. All you right, know, Captain and, Offies. And, and, well, no, but I mean, it's, <laughs> it's you know, the, the, the destiny's in their hands, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know? definitely. And, and in terms of the way that the fixtures are, are laying out for mm. the remainder... You know, it's there to it's it's there to play for. It's there to win. Mm. Um, I mean, we all know though that it won't go according to plan. And as you rightly say, you know, the chances are, knowing Everton, they're more likely to get something at Chelsea away than they will do against Forest at home, for example. Mm. You know, because mm. that's just what they do. Mm. Right. Let's move on to. Let's move away from footy. Let's have a few. Would you rather questions? I like these. These are good. Because you know what, Ped? I've got to want to start. You're going to okay. be the first to answer this. Right. right. Would you rather be trapped in a romantic comedy with your enemies mm. or trapped in a horror movie with your friends? Um, a lot of people would say that they're the same people. <laughs> Fair play. Fair. So what are you going for then? Oh, I just go for a romantic horror. I don't what? like horror films. No, so, no. So because you say you would do your friends, but then what if your friends are all being murdered yeah. in the horror film? Mm. Yeah. Yes. Whereas in the in the rom com, yeah. you get to like turn the people who don't like you around. Mm. True. I mean, not not literally, because well, I mean that would be a different film. Wouldn't well, it? that's a different. You know, film. you could use your aplomb. Then. That's yeah. the plomb. Yeah. Right, I think. I mean, right, it, might I think it might be a guilt. It might be a chance at staring it, you in the face. It could be. You know, you, no one wants to miss them. No. Or the gilded no. edge, mm. which Dave yeah. went for first. Yeah. Which again is, it could be a different thing. Very Dave, different. what would you be going for in that scenario? Romantic comedy with your enemies, or horror movie with your mates? Likewise for me, rom com all day long. Yeah. I don't like horrors either. I'm one of those people that that sits and watches horror films behind a cushion. Mm. And a you know, cushion? even at the age, even at the age of nearly forty, mm. yeah, still, nearly, yeah, nearly, can't relax. No, in no. that situation. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I would be very much going for the rom com, seeing if I could turn anybody around, mm. <laughs> metaphorically speaking. Fair play. You know, and seeing if 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 maybe, as you say, you know, we could 
uh, become more friends by the end of it than enemies, mm. depending mm. on what happens situationally. Sounds good. Sam? I, I'd go rom-com because rom-coms yeah. have that thing that we never get in the real world, which is the meet cute you know, where you, where you meet each other in this interesting way. Mm. I mean, me and my wife, we met, I was crossing the road, she was crossing the other way, and, and she was carrying a load of books, and I banged into her, and they all fell everywhere, and the, the wind was flat. That's very much went. rom-com, but carry on, yeah. yeah. I mean, that never happened, obviously. Mm. We were just <laughs> in a bar, and we just snog behind the bins. I mean, yeah. You, you I thought, really, I thought you cute, met... I thought you met in a, a department store when there was only one pair of leather gloves left, and you let them let her buy them at Christmas time, oh, and then you both grabbed them. one. One blew away, and you found it, and she was there at an ice rink in New York. Didn't happen. No, that was my ex. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I always get those two mixed up. <laughs> Fair enough. All right then, let's start with Sam. Then, would you rather have a face that everyone laughs at, or a name <laughs> that everyone laughs at? Well, you've just. One of those options is me is me life. To be honest, you know people say, "Well, you just look funny," or "I I laugh as soon as you come into a room." It's not really a compliment, is it? Uh, I'd I'd go for the name, yeah, because having a face that people laugh at will probably destroy your self confidence and ruin mm. your trips to Aldi. But your name, yeah, you could, you could have a stage name, or you could change your name, or you could. Mm. What, what's the name that everyone laughs at? Like Johnny Bananas or something? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I think some nineteen seventies juggler. Cock. I'd go with the name. Everyone name. would laugh at that name. Biggest Diggers. Cockwalla. Not about Biggest Diggers. B- biggest Diggers? <laughs> Why can nobody biggest talk? Biggest Diggers. Is that this podcast? It's because the joy of getting a draw. No, That's yeah. what it is. Uh, yeah. Okay, Dave. Um, Face your name. Well, I mean, I've got, a, I've got a name that people don't laugh at. Okay. No. okay. Comedy um, Dave? That makes people laugh, surely? No, it doesn't. <laughs> um... <laughs> I don't know. Would I like a... I think it probably should be a name as well. Yeah. yeah because the problem the problem with having a laughable face is that you can never switch off, can you? As Sam no. suggests, you know, you're on the whole time. And and maybe at inappropriate moments like funerals or things. Or, no, you know, that you wouldn't be great, yeah. Laughing at your face because it was that funny. Love making. Yeah. Love making yeah, at, a at a funeral as well. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you, you, you know what, you laugh, but apparently it's quite a common thing. I believe so. There's quite, there's quite a lot of, yeah, there's quite a lot of nobbing goes on, uh, you know, in a wake scenario, mm. I, I read. Yeah. Come here. I, I think it's that... because of height, heightened emotions and stuff yeah. and alcohol. Mm. Will, Will Ferrell. No, but when, it, I mean, when he said wake scenario, I just saw a film starring Keanu Reeves where mm. he just has to fight his way through different funerals. Through a wake. Yeah. The wake scenario. The wake scenario. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There's always stuff going off in wakes, yeah. and he's got a foil. Yeah, just that's another way. Foil fighting and goo. foil. Yeah, someone's a great foil a for foil. someone else. Yeah, yeah. or he's yeah. foiled the plot. I always, you know, this isn't funny, but it. But I do always think. Imagine how you feel when you're a failed terrorist. You know, the when you you're that, absolutely right. That was failed funny. bombers or the failed thing. Mm. I mean, are they just trying or to a failed foil? A failed foil, that'd be worse, wouldn't it? That'd be like, yeah. you know, because yeah. essentially like Tim Foil with the ripping. Mm. Hey, would you rather have a hook for a hand or a peg for a leg? I seen a fellow with a hooked hand the other week, and I'll be honest, well, I didn't guy, think... Abu Hamza had a hooked hand, didn't he? He did. Captain I mean, Hook. He, his, his, he doesn't feature on the podcast enough, I don't No, I, I, you're right. I, hang on, you're right. right. Captain Hook? Yeah. Was he just born with an unfortunate <laughs> name? No, he had, a, you know, he had a name that everyone laughed at. Yeah. He has a made mm. here, isn't he? He's like, cap, the cap, what am I What am I destined for? Oh, for fuck's sake. For hook's sake. Yeah, he could for have fuck's said. sake. But yeah. imagine that's when he come. I, I mean, when he came out the Al players entrance, if he had that hook as a baby, I mean, that's a bit weird, isn't it? How's he born with the hook? Yeah. The I was wondering you know, what you were talking about. Players entrance, you know what I mean? Um, so what are you going for? Peg leg or, or a, a hook for a hand? Uh, I'll go with I'll go with peg leg peg leg because you know yeah okay you can get by hand is yeah get by with it yeah stump mm. for a leg okay that was Sam. a famous Beatles song of course mm. I I go, go peg I go peg leg would you yeah. probably you know yeah, yeah. hooks hooks would sort of uh, me driving would suffer and me, mm. me I'd, I've always thought I'd like to learn to juggle and I don't think that would mm. would I mean, be conducive would it no. really no I think Captain Hook was a stage name though one for tax purposes I think he was just yeah. trying to he was getting paid yeah. cash in hand and he was just trying to... Cash in hook. 
very his, much. His, yeah. his real name was Doctor Hook. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Hey. Even, even though he wasn't a real doctor either, yeah. like Doctor no. Fox. Yeah. Very much yeah. like Anish yeah. Barapak. Like, like, like Lady. But um, Dave, are you are you peg legging it or are you hooking it? I am. I'm going full house because I think that I think that you would have more, or rather, you would feel less mm. disabled, if that's an appropriate thing to say by having a peg leg than a hook. I think mm. a hook is quite debilitating. Yeah. You, know, you can't even make toast properly with a hook. Hand. No, no. Can you have like no. a speed peg leg? No, for running. Like, well, you could replace it with a blade because people have the blades. Yeah, yeah. Just, but, yeah. That, which like, is, like Pistorius had. He's another name that doesn't come off on the Yeah, no, and he, look how well it ended for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's move on briefly. I mean, not briefly, quickly. I said briefly. <laughs> let's move on briefly. Yeah, well, you look. <laughs> okay, okay, okay let's, go back, so, let's go back so to Oscar Pistorius. Let's go back then. to Oscar Pistorius. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I'd have left that. I'd have left that FX alone there. To be fair, in all honesty, uh, would you rather go one month with only a tank top on, or one month with only a thong on? <laughs> see, I, I can, I, can, I go, Vitti, can I go first on this? I think you, Dave, would look tremendous in just a tank top. I think you'd be able to carry it off. I really do. But go with a plum. I mean, with listen. I mean, I would take that. I would take that uh, compliment mm. in the way that it was intended. Mm. I think all day long it's the tank top for a month. Yeah. Because I think I would much rather be in possession of a month old tank top mm. than a month old thong. And it's yeah. to do with 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 body position essentially. Yeah. yeah. Well, Hygiene. You know, unless, you t- unless you wear the tank top around your bit. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, that'd just be a bit weird, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Become yeah, a be like a stuff. cheese grater by the end, wouldn't it? You know what I mean? Not not a grater <laughs> as such, but you know, what are those? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, mm. yeah. I'd I'd be with the tank top all day. But are you wearing nothing but the tank top? Because you can't. Once so, again, yeah. you can't go I mean, the you can't no, go the Aldi. You can't. No, you're not. You, no, you, you get you arrested can't. for for that. In yeah, Aldi. you'd be all, you'd have a, appropriate you attire. Can you imagine going in the middle aisle at Aldi with just a tank well, top on? Uh, but you, you don't know white something there. You get a wetsuit there, wouldn't you? I tell you what, it also greater. gives another another dimension to middle aisle of Aldi. It, it if does, you add doesn't nothing it? On, the, on the bottom half. <laughs> Absolutely no. You, I think for You'd the have to stay away did. from the grinders, wouldn't you? You would. I, 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 I was in Aldi. Just we'll come back to Sam and I was briefly. In, I was in Aldi briefly this morning with Oscar's Pistorius. Oscar's. Oscar's. Pistorius. Oscar. Well, not with the real one, am I? He's he's yeah. kind of got issues about getting oh, you know yes. being free. What he's got, he's there's a. And the player out personal thing personating a player, them. A player yeah. yeah there's a there's a yeah but i was in them i wasn't in the middle aisle that'd be a bit weird um but i was i was walking past the middle aisle today yeah. and there was a fella no word of a lie he had a basket right in his basket he had cashew nuts yeah right mm. four pints of milk and he picked up two bags of aggregate for the garden and yeah. i was looking thinking <laughs> Hey, I'm not convinced yeah. you're ba- you're going to be able to lift that mm. basket because he was struggling yeah, yeah. getting them into mm. his basket. Mm. But essentially, Before his missus hasn't, or he hasn't said to his missus, I'm just nipping to Aldi for the cashew nuts and some milk and I'll pick up a couple of bags of aggregate while I'm there, has he? But he's obviously an opportunist. He's seen the aggregate in the middle aisle yeah. today and thought, I can't leave that in the shop. Are you a basket pave? Today it was, because ju- I was just like, mate, you are not going to be able to carry those two bags in that basket all the way to the aisle. He wasn't a young well, whippersnapper, by the way. I'm worried now if I go to Aldi, I'm, I'll be worried about anything I put in my basket. No, I'm thinking that no. there's people like Baz who stare at you and judge no, you just by what, what you stick in you your basket. Got some butter in your basket and you put in the fucking... I mean, that's not a euphemism, by the <laughs> no. way. When he talks about having butter in his no, basket... No. That's actually the you name know? of our new podcast. That is, yeah. I mean, I mean that also might illustrate alleviate the chafing from the month-long it, thong as well possibly. if you had butter in your basket. It's actually what I'm producing by wearing a month-long thong. All right, <laughs> all right. Bloody <laughs> hell, Sam. Thong or tank top? Jesus Christ, Ped. What's this on me toast? It's, I can't believe it's not Ped. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, is this is this zest? <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez. Here's my butter I, with I, a bomb. All right, all right. <laughs> Despite everything that's been said and a and very valid point that have been made, I'd go speedo because you, you've got speedo Mick. I could be speedo Sam. I don't yeah. want to be tank top Sam. No, but it's I a thong. Be... All right, thong Sam. A speedo thong Mick. I mean, thong Sam sounds like a Thai restaurant. That yeah, it does. It does. Thong delivery. <laughs> Let me see your thong. I mean, you wouldn't want to see it by You're the end more, of the month. Actually, to be fair, you would make a better speedo. You're more streamlined, Sam. Yeah. I don't. 
see speed on I, he's got hair. I Sam, Sam hasn't. <laughs> you don't, Sam, might have a bloody hairiest chest you've ever seen. But hairy ass. It could be on anything. <laughs> we haven't seen Sam in only his tank top. We don't know what his nether regions are like in his legs. You speak for yourself, Barry. <laughs> well, fair play. Fair play, what, you might what's, have. What happens on part. poor stage? If you two have gone there already in this relationship, <laughs> which is very young, you want to pick your standards up a I bit. I told you we were flickering, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. Well, and that's that's why I was worried he hadn't come back after I'd sent him those pictures. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you it, go. It happens to everyone. Those, those <laughs> aggregate picks. Yeah. Someone, like, just, someone smiles, yeah. I send them a picture, and I don't hear from them again. But that's just what happens. It's during this, this podcast, I've... I've, I've actually bought the domain name of about 15 websites here. Butter in your basket being the latest one. Yeah. Fair I'm play. On Abu Hamza one, but I'm not sure. Don't go near the... Don't put Oscar Pistorius in. Hamza dot, sure. the hook. Hook dot com. Your hook. That's a brilliant... That's a brilliant That is a good name. one, that. <laughs> Abu, Abu Hamza, Hamza dot, dot hook. hook. <laughs> that is not bad. You'd have them on the... Uh, you'd have them on the hook there. Um, like, the last couple... Would you... Would you... Would, <laughs> <laughs> Can we have some? Let's just let's focus for the last call. No, let's what? let's 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 go back to Oscar Pistorius briefly. <laughs> well, I did say briefly. Oh my god! Um, would you rather date a girl who won't stop talking or date a girl who won't stop texting? Uh, oh, tech. No, I'd, I'd rather date a girl who won't stop texting. Yeah. If it meant that she didn't talk. Yeah. Because you know what they like. You know what they like when they talk. You know. Gonna rob, a, gonna rob a bit of John Bishop here, you know, mm. just when he breathes. When he breathes. Breathe. You'd have had to you're slow from, it. You're from Hong Kong, stop pretending to be scouts. You'd have had um, to slow it down a bit yeah. when he don't yeah. stop. Yeah, breathing. no, they, they didn't. They can text all he wants, but the talking becomes an issue. Be enough. It becomes an issue, yeah. It? Yeah. I'd I agree. Boys, where are we at with that? I think, well, most women can can do that one-handed. I'm talking texting, obviously. You know, mm. Unless, of course, you're Abu Hamza. Abu Hamza or Captain so, Hook, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think actually, in that respect, the, the texting non-stop would be less... Invasive. Intrusive in, mm. in... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less invasive in the relationship because, yeah. you know, they'd be able to do other, th- other things with the other hand, like open doors. Yeah. Open jars, jars, yeah. Open jars, mm. shake hands with people. Yeah. You know, and stir tea. Exactly. Or coffee, could be coffee. Or other drinks are available. Sam, mm. uh, could be a boy uh, this as well, by the way. Could be a girl, could be a boy, mm, whatever. Sure. Yeah. We're broad think, church. Absolutely. Cracking program, by the way. Yeah. Great, great David Tennant at his best. Yeah. Hey, our mate was the murderer in that. In the he was, one, you know? he was. No, third one. Third one was yeah. Chris Mason, big Evertonian. Mm-hmm. Lives big in LA Everton. now. I'm speaking to him this week, actually. There you go. Carry on. Just, to, just to throw I've, that in. Just to throw I've that in. Mate, I've got a mate who's an actor, and his biggest role was uh, they used a photograph of him as a as, as a dead person in one scene of EastEnders. Just a photograph. <laughs> I often worry, <laughs> wonder about that. They're all in silent witness when they get killed, dead aliens. Mm. Like, you have to just sit on that slab. But well, you know, years ago, sorry, we will come back to you, Sam. <laughs> briefly. Years, briefly. Mm. Years ago. When you get killed early doors, yeah. that was you done, money. You might be in something for two minutes. But mm. now, because a lot of yeah, it is back like go back. the backstory and hat, you're still involved, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Flashback. Mm. See, your mate, Sam, would be perfect for Death in Paradise. They always get killed in the first three yeah. minutes. And you'd, he might be then... Paradise, of course, which is the spin Another off. classic one. Uh, you might get a couple of extra scenes where mm. what he did three weeks ago. So, yeah. you know, tell him to keep plugging away there. Yeah. But um, what are you going for, Sam? Dating a girl who won't stop talking or a girl who won't stop texting? Oh, boy, could be a boy. Mm. I'm texting because um, talking is something... I, I, like, me and my wife have got this... I, I talk more than air. Not that I'm dominant. It's just that I'm, I've got more nonsense in my head say. that I need to get out my mouth. Mm. And some days she gives me a word count and she just says, you've hit your word count now. You need to pack it in. Well, like steps. Like steps. Like like steps for the day. Yeah, 10,000 words. Mm, Your fifth bit goes off. And you're like, shut up. So I think I'd need someone who could text. Maybe they could write down what I was saying. They could Mm. sort of, you know... uh, Transcribe you. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, transcribe. They'd need a fast hook. They would. They would. would. Predictive text saves a lot of time, though, so you can get actually Mm. more words done. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, we'll finish with this one. Because I'm going to go to Sam first. Okay, you understand no. why? No, no. Would you rather grow a ponytail down to your ankles or have a huge Adam's apple? 
<laughs> Imagine having a, a full apple size in just you know, yeah. So what what are you going for, mate? I, I'd go ponytail because mm. I'd look absolutely ridiculous with no hair and a ponytail because I think that's a but that's yeah. a bold look. That, that says, is a bold walk, look. It's a bold, walk, bold look. Bold, bold and bold, bold look. Mm. Yeah. Mm. When you walk into a room with with that look, people just think, "Yeah, this is a confident man who Monk. be messed with." And I want people to think that about me. Mm. And I would also, com- you know, combine it with the tank top speedo yeah. combination. Absolutely, yeah. wear both. And I'd, I'd wear both because they would really, really bring mm. out. They'd make the ponytail pop. It would. Sort of it would. It's one way of saying like, like, maybe I, in fact, maybe I could grow it and then sort of bring it back up and like sort of yeah. put it over my hair. Mm. And have a full over your hair. hair. So over you'd me, have, hang on, just for over. clarity. So we'd get <laughs> hair and we'd bring a ponytail yeah. over said hair as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. Bubble I, hair. I'd just say yeah. You, you mean in the way in the way that people who don't have much hair might do the classic picture next to a girl or, or a boy mm-hmm. with long hair and they do that thing where they, they roll they with it to make it look yeah. like they, you know, and mm-hmm. it normally makes them look a little bit like Phil Oakey from the, the, the uh, yeah. Human League. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I do that one yeah, myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fair play. Dave, what would you go for? Ponytail as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, it would have to be because I don't like the idea of, of having a massive Adam's apple. Mm-hmm. I think mine's quite big anyway, actually. It's not know, an apple size though, is it? Not an apple size, but I wouldn't want to have a really big one because yeah. I think that that would look like a like a growth or a deformity, mm-hmm. which aesthetically you, would be un 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 unappealing. Mm-hmm. You'd need a big neck, wouldn't you? You'd yeah. look like one of your mates, mm-hmm. David Coulthard, who's got a huge, huge neck. Don't get me wrong, yeah. he he fits it. He fits it well. He fits it well. as well. But uh, I don't know if I could pull off a big a big uh, really a big neck. Yeah, not with a no, hook I mean, anyway. Not no. with a hook. No, not no. again. Mm-hmm. I think I'd go for a ponytail. Go for a ponytail. Mm. Rock like the monk look. No hair, mm. just a little bust of ponytail. I was gonna say, I'm like, yeah, just like, the monk look, but orange robes to go with it, yeah. with the thong. And we're, and we're cooking. And why is the thong? We're like, cooking. You've got to keep. We're the cooking. Very mm. nice. Mean, what a what a place to cooking uh, with butter. <laughs> <laughs> There's the name of a podcast, surely. Cooking mm. with butter yeah. in a thong tank top. Mm. And some aggregates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cooking with butter in a thong tank top. And some aggregates. Yeah. There you go. Let's leave it there. From for Butter it. with Love. Oh, they're all coming out now. Here we go. Are we going back to Oscar Pistorius? Briefly. Or? Briefly. We've come back briefly, to Briefly, just briefly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think we should just leave it. Yeah. Because if you keep going, I'll say something that's really inappropriate. Yeah, no, stop. let's... Cr- let's yeah, uh, yeah, you've just let's reminded me. Yeah, your control... Um, is yeah let's leave it there let's leave it there right boys thank you very much thanks to everyone for watching listening hit the like button subscribe give it a five star rating do all of that go and see sam go and see sam yeah sam i mean where are you performing this week i i I haven't really got a tour now till next autumn so i'll I'll get back to you when the data confirms but i'm just i'm I'm taking some time off. just go and knock on his door and well, see if he says something funny. Garden, I'll, I'll get on the roof like like the Abbey Road gig. And I'll yeah. Let's go and see if he's doing a bit of grouting. Just see if he'll grouting say something. with Sam. Is grouting that another with podcast? Sam. Okay. See mm. if he'll say something funny. Okay. Hey, say something funny. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> okay. The name of the next show. The name of the next show. That'll be a good one. It's not a bad name. That isn't. A... Say something funny in Nobed is a brilliant title. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, good for a tour. Oh, no, for, oh, yeah. We're going to do the catchphrase. Say Find something funny. Down. Say something funny. Yes, hit. Yeah. I, I, see, I think a knob and we'll get away. Fingers. It hits might be a bit the of a catchphrase on. Mm. There you go. It could work. Mm. It could it work. Could. There you go. We are done. Thank you very much for watching, listening, doing all that stuff. See you later. Bye.